Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, January 22nd, and it's time for the Comments X. These are the raw comments, unedited, uncensored in any way, one take from start to finish. Now, Yesterday wasn't too much of a productive day. Um, I didn't get what I expected to get done. It was sort of this when I kind of, you kind of every once in a while you, you you can work can do you can study for twelve hours a day straight for a couple of weeks and after a while you kind of hit this wall and uh, you need a day off to really sort of oh just sit back think and. Uh, sleep so that's what happened yesterday uh, I got up did my a bit of my daily routine uh, worked on the structure for the Omega construct the mega construct for a bit walked around the internet particularly YouTube then went out for dinner with to my parents place came back and just sort of uh, went back to bed. But I didn't necessarily, I could sleep for a bit, but not always. It's, it, it, you, wait, you sleep for a bit, then you think of something that you did wrong uh, on some of the theories you're working on. So you wake up, you do some writing and some reading, go back to bed, and repeat the cycle all over again until just a few minutes ago. And after that's why you know I, I uh, unlike uh, most guys uh, uh, and like some girls, I do keep a dream journal uh, where I write things down and from there ideas that sort of come to mind as I'm uh, working on things. And that's sort of what yesterday was. It was it was sort of uh, I guess it's you know. Every so often you have to stop and sort of digest everything you've been reading and thinking about for the last couple of weeks, and uh, that's what happens there. Uh, but it does tend to throw off the uh, sleep schedule so that you're no longer sleeping in normal daily fashion. You're now sleeping in spurts and waking up every uh, couple hours to, to sit down and start writing uh, the things you were dreaming about in, in terms of uh, their significance to the, the different theories that you've been working on. So that's what occurred yesterday. Uh, other than that, uh, I, I was having some fun just sort of strolling around looking at the different things I like to see on YouTube. And uh, that's where it sort of pops up. You can see on my feed what I've been doing. It's sort of a, a weird. It, this is where it uh, uh, gets uh, geekish. Uh, for those of you who don't know what geeks are, or who geeks are, or what geeks are, or you know, uh, there's two sides to, to the geek. There's one side that is very intelligent, but there's also the other side that's really t childish. Uh, and it's sort of like it's sort of like. A, uh, a, Someone who is really intelligent and really, but never really grows up. And this is with Sheldon Cooper, if you see on Big Bang Theory, and uh, and a lot of other geeks. Every time they refer to a geek who's got this sort of this high IQ, they're always in the comic book store. Uh, they uh, have a particular comic hero. They go to these uh, conventions called cons, where they dress up as their heroes. Um, that sort of uh, I guess standard for most geeks, and I'm no exception. Uh, I started oh, years ago when it was in my first or second year of university, where I was sitting down doing some uh, hefty calculus, and it does take it's, it does take an enormous amount of concentration to do calculus, uh, particularly as you when you when you when you're f first starting out, uh, the the calculus can be daunting. But I always sort of liked the uh, the cartoons, so I started watching cartoons while I was doing the calculus. And it sort of continued from there on up that uh, I'm always watching the kids shows 
Uh, well, now kid shows, anyways. Uh, even when I'm doing my research. So my favorite channels that I usually watch are Disney, Nick, Nickelodeon, uh, or of that variety. That's those are the typically the shows that I uh, that I like to watch. Uh, I always say that when my age is between the age of eight, eight and fourteen, with an infinite loop. Uh, it just if you look at the uh, the life path of where people most people go, most people tend towards a uh, stabilized life where uh, the amount of knowledge they'll they'll learn in any in their lifetime is finite. It sort of reaches a roof and uh, that's about it, and it sort of slows down. And they are what they are for the rest of life. They're an IT person. They're a, they're a fireman. They're a business person, and so on and so forth. The inner learning really doesn't go much beyond there in terms of what the, their intellectual capacity is. Uh, kids uh, between the ages of 8 and 14 usually have uh, an infi infinite capacity for, in uh, for intelligence because nothing's been set yet. Uh, there is no fundamental direction in life. There's a lot of experimentation in terms of where they possibly could go. Uh, there, you know. And there's a lot of playing around. And this is why kids, in many ways, take the technology better than adults do, is because the kids will actually play with the technology and sort of figure it out through their playing, where adults won't do that. Adults will, you know, unless they uh, will know something and, uh, and feel, can feel uh, confident in it, they won't do anything about it. So... They will never, uh, uh, you know, they don't really want to appear uh, unconfident. They don't want to appear uh, incapable. So they won't try n new things uh, that will put them in this position, back in the kid position. Where a person like myself, uh, who is an exploratory scientist, uh, my job is to explore the unknowns to push the boundaries of, uh, of what we know and, and, what, and find out what's go into the unknown on a daily basis. Uh, my life and uh, my sort of lifestyle is more akin to kids or more like kids than it is uh, an adult. So at some point in time, as I continue pushing the boundaries forward, uh, I found myself... Um, having more in common with uh, kids than I did with, than adults. So I said, well, if this is the case, if as I sort of found new layers, uh, uh, you know, sort of pushed the boundaries open, and I found that uh, it kept going, that there is an infinite amount of space up there and really to, to really learn, uh, from our perspective, there, we, we really can't put or confine uh, the universe to what we consider to be a limited or a finite, uh, a finite uh, space. Because it's, from our perspective, it's just simply too large. So all of our understanding in it is always going to be an understanding and not the understanding. We're not going to have a total understanding of things. We're going to have a partial understanding of things. Simply because there are always going to be things beyond us. Uh, that being sa said, uh, as I got to this realization, and I was still watching the kids' shows, I said, well, there is not going to be any growing up for me, so let's continue on with the kids' stuff, and this will be part of my geek thing. So, that's what you'll see on YouTube. If you, watch my, if you look at my feed and you see what I'm doing on YouTube, and if you, watch my twi if you follow me on Twitter, you'll s and this is what also shows up on my Facebook account, uh, my Facebook feed, uh, you'll see uh, me watching a lot of kids' stuff or sort of looking at uh, uh, G. Hanelius uh, from Disney, uh, also Selena Gomez, and uh, everyone else along those lines. Uh, that's, I guess, what I particularly do uh, on the, uh, on the other, uh, other side of my geek, beyond the exploratory science. Uh, which stems from uh, quantum physics, you have uh, my uh, childish side. And that is my childish side. You'll see both of them as, we, as, uh, as uh, time uh, moves on. And if you look at back at my uh, 
my uh, feed history, you'll see. Yeah, there I am. <laughs> so that's about it for today. Uh, I'm going to try to get to some more Y comments later on. I still have some fixing up back here to do on this computer. Uh, but uh, we'll see how the day goes. I'm feeling better. So anyways, see you a little bit later, a little bit later on.